Russell Westbrook, the decision was going to be made pretty pretty clear after Paul George said his name publicly in the locker room, you know, uh, shortly after the three-way trade that sent Russell to the purgatory that is Utah. So we kind of just we kind of just knew what was crazy is that when Paul George said that that night, Lawrence Frank, who only makes himself available less than a handful of times a year, described a player that sounded like Russell Westbrook as a player that the Clippers would probably not be interested in bringing on. And I think you also, you, you have to have a translator for cert, for, for personnel execs and I've been around the team for a few years, uh, longer than that, if you don't include the athletics. So I kind of was listening to Lawrence and was like, John Wall was just on his team. Eric Bledsoe, who Will could not say nicer things about Eric Bledsoe. Uh, <laughs> he was on the team last Ooh, boy. year. And then the year before that, Rajon Rondo was traded here for fan favorite Lou Williams. So I've seen this team add guys who Lawrence has said, if you kind of read between the lines, don't always fit around Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. So why Russell? Besides the fact that they had that Oklahoma City run, uh, PG and Russ, besides the fact that Teron Lue keeps on saying how much he wants a traditional point guard in his rotation, despite the fact that this team was literally built to be a wing stop type of team, it's the fact that you got to look at Kawhi. Kawhi has been doing great work on the court over the last two months, really. And at the same time, him and PG, they're asked to do everything. They're asked to be not just the top scorers, but the top playmakers. They're asked to be not just the top defenders, but the top rebounders. And for three quarters, they look really good doing that. And then in the fourth quarter, I see these teams that they're blowing out start to come back. And Kawhi and PG, those shots are coming up short. And the turnovers start to pile up. And then you wonder, hmm, they barely survived this game. And they look tired right now. What's this going to look like two months from now? So... It's 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 strange to think of this because Russell is a notoriously inefficient player. But if you have Russell Westbrook having some more of those possessions in the middle of games, you know, first three quarters of games or so, and that saves the workload a little bit on Paul George and Kawhi Leonard so that those guys can be at their best when it matters the most in the fourth quarter. That's kind of what we're going at. It's a comfort thing. It's a comfort thing for PG because he's always looking out for us, except when he wants to go to the LA Clippers. It's a comfort thing for Kawhi because Kawhi doesn't want to. Kawhi's always been barking about a point guard ever since the bubble. And it's a comfort thing for T. Lou, a guy who's won champion a championship as a point guard in this league. So it's it's not a necessary move. Look, Russ is a luxury, but Russ is a luxury for a team that doesn't need him. Uh, to be good a team that's good already not great but good and I have an open mind to it as far as seeing how it goes so I mean a few ways that this could work in theory is one you put four shooters around him and so he actually has room and he's actually kicking out the guys that want to shoot and then to the Clippers need to push and transition more because credit to Russ it's a fast break no matter what as long as he gets the ball in his hands like are those things that's going to really help I think it does help because Let's put it this way. The Clippers are a slow team, but they have a lot of shooters. And ironically, something that wasn't the case with when John was on the team, the Clippers, Lawrence Frank did a great job at the trade deadline balancing the team. Luke Kennard's a really good player, but his weaknesses are too similar to Norman Powell's weaknesses. And Norm is a damn six man of the year candidate, like an actual one, not like what Russ was doing with the Lakers. <laughs> so now you have Eric Gordon in his place. And Eric is just a sturdier defender and a guy who, unlike Luke, is a lot more willing to actually do things when he's not wide open. So that helped. Mason Plumlee is the backup center now, whereas before uh, the Clippers just didn't have a reliable backup center and the wing stop lineups just didn't. Again, Nicholas Batum and Robert Covington have similar weaknesses on both ends of the floor. And it took the Clippers actually having to play those dudes together to figure that out. And so... Now you have a backup center. You can play Powell and Gordon with another guard together, theoretically. And even getting a guy like Bones, you you pick up some youth. Uh, and so Russ is going to be in a better situation than John was. 
that's going to be a tough pill to swallow for people who want to see John make his comeback. But that's the other part of this. Russ is healthier than John is. So this is just a better roster for Russell Westbrook than it was for John Wall with the Clippers and better than it was for Russell Westbrook with the Lakers, who the most used five-man lineup, Jared and Will, that Russell Westbrook was on the floor for for the Lakers involved Anthony Davis and three other guards, Patrick Beverly, Lonnie Walker the fourth, and Austin Reeves. Tell me how that makes any kind of sense if you're trying to be successful on the floor. You're not going to see that with the Clippers. Yeah, and I think, well, Russ, you know, it's very easy to kind of uh, be very extreme in the way you, you analyze him. It's either like Russ sucks or Russ is super underrated. People are hating on Russ. And I think, like you pointed out, there are times in L.A. where they kind of had him in a nuanced role where it worked for stretches and he was able to do some things to help out those other guys. But the issue with Russ is it's very hard to keep things nuanced with him because of his personality, right? And I think the conversation here isn't so much about the basketball fit because we've seen Russ work with PG. We know Kawhi can basically play with anybody. T lose a great coach. He can figure it out. The issue is how is Russ going to handle things when he plays maybe 15 minutes in one of these games? How yep. is Russ going to talk to the media when he gets asked certain questions by maybe a law Murray or someone like that? Uh, how is Russ going to handle things, you know, when he's not being used as much, or is he going to have an issue with his coach in the locker room, the way Russ did with Darvin Ham, where they went chest to chest. And then they had an issue because he wasn't happy about when Darvin Ham subbed him out of a game. I, I think these are the issues you got to talk about when you bring Russell in. It's, of course, he's got trouble shooting. He turns the ball over way too much. He's not going to defend on certain possessions, but I think the much bigger thing is, with with the Clippers, I think it was very similar to what happened with Brooklyn this year, pre everything blowing up, where it kind of just got very quiet around those guys. And it's been very basketball focused now that Kawhi has been more consistent playing and PG's been healthy and they're starting to figure out these lineups. We've been very basketball focused there. And I'm worried about how is Russ going to bring in, come in there and maybe make some waves off the court where they don't have to deal with that stuff when PG and Kawhi are your two stars. And we know T. Lou is a guy who who very rarely has issues with players in the locker room. Well, Russ don't give a damn about that. He has issues with everybody in the locker room. Uh, so how much is that going to come into play and how much is that going to affect them on the court, even if Russ – it's filling up the box score the way he we know he can. That's going to be the biggest question. And this is a different situation for us. And that's really been my whole take on this whole situation is how different this situation is with the Clippers than it was with the Lakers or any other team that Russ has been on. Russ ain't one of the one or two or three best players on the team. Okay. And Russ is going to, he's headed for some career lows. Minutes, shots, touches, they're going to be lows. And the difference is, I know that had to have been part of the conversation with Russ going in. When he was traded to the Lakers, it was LeBron and AD staying to the front office. Let's get Russ. Let's get a third star. We'll figure the rest out. And I don't think Frank Vogel was like, guys, what team did we just win the championship with? That's different. Teron Lou is there with Kawhi and PG, and they're like, yo, let's do this, basically. And if we're going to do this, this is how we're going to do it. And they're telling Russell Westbrook that. And this and Russell Westbrook's not on a max contract anymore. So that means two things. Number one, you have a roster around where if Russ ain't playing, you still can do things. Whereas those other teams, all the other teams that Russ was on, because of his contract, because of his stature in the league, Russ had to be a big part of, the, of whatever success was going to come out of it. That's number one. And number two, Russ don't got the leverage to just be tripping like this anymore. Like you can't, if you're the Lakers, you can't cut $47 million. If you're the Clippers, what's a minimum contract to Steve Ballmer, right? So, and I don't mean that as a threat. I mean that as this had to have been a conversation where it's like, Russ, this is the expectations. Even if he does start, and I'm not sure it's 100% certain he starts right away, but even if he does start, that doesn't mean he's gonna play a ton of minutes there's going to be some uh, a place where you got to be a part of a team. You can't just make it about yourself. So I think that's going to be a thing where day one, you're going to have one assessment. Day 51, you're going to have another. And we're not even talking about day 100 unless the Clippers are playing in the finals anyway. So Ty, Ty Lu and the Stars being on the same page with Russ at the beginning of this, I think that's going to be a big part of how Russ goes about his tenure with the Clippers. 
for one, is forty seven million even that much with Steve Ballmer? Uh, you might have waved that too. But <laughs> <laughs> um I can't believe we're talking about Russ starting. Like he he just got he was gonna get cut by the Lakers from all reports. So they didn't even want him, period. And he's gonna start? Like that's that's wild. It's not like his performance is merited. It, it makes sense for him to be in the rotation, but I guess that's the situation. But I kind of feel like I'd rather just start Terrence Mann. I would much rather start Terrence Mann. Yeah, maybe Terrence Mann is like a classic case of this like guy that keeps getting he keeps earning minutes and then getting shoved down the depth chart because of whatever moves they make. It's like I feel like they got to learn from the yeah. mistake on that one. Well, well, the thing with Terrence is no one thinks he's a point guard. Like he's the starting point guard by yeah. nominal position. Even Terrence does not refer to himself as the point guard like we were talking before the trade deadline about reggie and terrence tells me yeah we all know reggie is our point guard with reggie jackson coming off the bench about to get traded okay so (laughs) that's and that's the thing like paul they all everyone loves terrence okay um and terrence is going to earn time like the thing about terrence you guys mentioned it he always gets shoved down he always comes he always comes up damn it like I don't worry about T-Man. Like <laughs> um, the team, like T- Teron Lou thinks of T-Man as a small forward. The only guy who, the only coach who really consistently wanted to have Terrence be a point guard, ironically, was Doc, who T-Man and Doc aren't even that close, you know? So the thing with Terrence is, I know that Terrence has been frustrated about his role in general because he's been asked to play every position. And really when he's out there starting or playing, whether it's first unit or second unit, he's a connector. He's not a play starter. So I'd rather the Clippers stick with Terrence in the starting lineup, but I also know that if Terrence winds up keeping the same minutes but coming off the bench, he's going to make the impact the same way. It, and the, the bigger question is just how does T. Lou balance what is happening with Russ and put him in position to succeed? Terrence is not someone I worry about, though. He's going to be fine.